It's that time of year again where I look at which is the best stocks and shares ISA for the 2022 to 2023 tax year. As always, I like to keep these videos detailed and I think putting them all side by side and comparing them on certain factors gives you guys the clearest picture possible. So I'm going to do that and then stick around to the end because I'm going to do a tier list and put them in order of who I think is the best, as well as giving you my personal opinion on who I would go for. Remember that your ISA isn't static, you could change it every single year if you wanted to. And this may form part of your strategy because as your pot grows, some providers will become cheaper and are a better option. And as you grow, you might also be more cautious of who your money is held with. All the companies I mentioned here are very solid providers who have got a good reputation. You'll notice a couple might be missing and that's for a couple of reasons. One, they either don't offer an ISA, two, they've probably got rubbish fees, or three, I couldn't actually find the fees to put them in a fair comparison. For example, I wanted to add the Fidelity ISA and I looked for the FX fee, which I'll mention later, for 15 minutes and I couldn't find it. So I couldn't in good faith put them into this comparison. A lot has changed this year with providers. It's been a bit crazy, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. If you could take a minute to press that like button because these videos take an awful lot of time and it shows me that you guys appreciate them and it's worth putting in the effort. And if you haven't already, do subscribe because you can follow me on my entire journey into building a £1 million portfolio, which I share everything in a completely transparent format. The wins, the losses and everything in between. And also a quick mention to today's sponsor, which is Coinjar. Coinjar have launched the UK's first UK MasterCard for cryptocurrency, which means you're actually able to spend your cryptocurrency in the real world. You get rewarded in points that you can use towards fees, so you can essentially make their fee a really low cost platform. It's already one of the cheapest providers, they're FCA registered and it's where I buy all my cryptocurrency. And the best thing is I've had no issues with banks blocking me, which was the reason that I transferred to them in the first place. So I highly recommend checking them out. Go grab your card because it's literally free. Just download the app, I will leave a link down below. So with that being said, let's dive into the comparison. So in this comparison, I'm going to be comparing seven of the top providers. As I mentioned, there's a couple missing. I've gone for the most popular ones that people People talk about the most. So the ones included in this comparison are Hargreaves Lansdowne, Interactive Investor, we've got Invest Engine, IG, AJ Bell, Vanguard, Free Trade, and iWeb. So I'm going to compare them on a range of different factors so you can see them all side by side. And what's interesting, I think this will actually shed some light on providers that you think may have been way more expensive, so you've never really considered. First up is the platform fee. Now this one is actually quite interesting because in life it's quite clear that sometimes the cheapest isn't always the best, right? So so I've tried to put them all side by side and compare them in the most fair way possible. Now it's quite difficult because they've all got different payment structures and I think that's kind of on purpose because what they can do is kind of manipulate it to make themselves look better or cheaper or something along those lines. So I've tried to put these side by side to show you exactly how they work. Okay, so first up we've got Hargreaves Lansdowne. Now their fee is £3.75. Now you might think that's crazy, I thought they were more expensive. But actually, when you work it out, it's not actually that bad, right? So here's their fee structure on their website. And this on the left is where it seems very expensive. So on the first, 250, 0.5, and then it scales up from there, right? But there's no cap on funds. But funds aren't funds that you're thinking of. These are different kinds of funds. But actually, this is the one you should be looking at. So on the right, you can see shares. So this includes UK and overseas shares, investment trusts, and the important bit is exchange traded funds. So that's your ETFs, which is gonna be the majority of things you're buying, as well as some of them investment trusts like Smithson and Fundsmith, which are also super popular. So actually the whole platform is going to cost you 45 pound per year. Now, when we divide that by 12, that's when we get 3 pound 75. Next, Interactive Investor is 9 pound 99 per month. That does come with a perk of a free share every month, which is nice. Next up, we've got Invest Engine. Now Invest Engine to use a platform actually costs zero for a stock and shares ISA, which is unheard of, or it's 0.25% if you choose for them to manage your money, which is a fairly okay charge if you want someone to do it for you. Now, IG is a bit of a weird one, right? So they charge £8 per month, or it's free if you make over three trades per month. Now, that's good if you're active and you remember to do it. If you don't, you are going to be paying the £8 per month, so that's why I would put it at £8 per month. But maybe worth considering if you're a really active trader and you're going to stay on top of it. Next up, we've got AJ Bell, which is £3.50 a month, which is really attractive, but they have a 0.25% fee on funds. Now that 0.25 isn't capped, so that's what you have to be quite careful of. If your portfolio grew quite large, then that fee could become quite hefty. Next up, we've got Vanguard, which is 0.15%, which is a nice low fee. Fee. Free trade is a bit of a funny one. Free trade is actually £3 per month or 
£9.99 per month, and that's for their pro platform. Now, now it's quite hard to compare them because you'll soon find if you use a platform, you will soon end up going for the £9.99 per month because some of the stocks and shares just won't be available that you want to buy. So I think it's only really fair in this overall comparison to put them in at £9.99. iWeb's quite nice, it's just gonna cost you £100 once for a one-off fee. Next up, we've got the trading fee. So that's how much it costs to buy an individual share. So HL is the most expensive at £11.95. Next up, II is £7.99, but you do get that one for free each and every month. Invest Engine don't charge you anything, their fee is zero. Be aware that there are some small fund charges which could creep in across any of these platforms. Next up on IG, it's £10 for US and £8 for UK. Now that does reduce to zero on US and £3 on UK if you're trading regularly again. So you have to stay on top of it. It's quite difficult to do so, but again, worth looking at if you're an active trader. Vanguard's free, but that's if you let them buy it at the time they want to, because they put a bulk package together, which reduces their costs. Otherwise, if you want to buy it instantly, you're going to have to pay £7.50, which is something that a lot of people don't talk about. Now, if you've got a hands-off approach, that might not matter, but if you want to buy it there and then, you might have to pay that charge. Free trade don't charge you anything, which is nice, and iWeb is a £5 flat fee per trade across the board. Both of these fees are a bit of a weird one. While they're quite important, also you are paying for a quality service. So don't get too caught up too much on the fees. It's more about finding the right platform that suits your goals. But we'll talk about that a little more later. Next up, we've got this option, which is really interesting that a lot of people don't cover. And these are the fees to reinvest. So first up, you can reinvest in stocks. So Hargreaves Lansdowne will charge you 1% to reinvest in the same stocks that you already buy. So what you can do is buy a stock and then just top it up each and every month. So they will charge you 1%, which is a max of £10. Interactive Investor is really nice and they actually charge you zero to do that, which can form a really important part of your strategy. So for example, you could pay the 9 99 then have the one trade for free per month and then you could top it for free. So essentially the only main cost you would be paying is a 9.99 per month. Invest Engine, this doesn't apply because they don't have individual stocks. IG doesn't apply, they don't offer the service. AJ Bell charge you £1.50. So Vanguard don't have that option available because they don't have individual stocks. Free Trade don't have it available and also iWeb don't. Now the next one is reinvesting in funds. Hargreaves Lansdowne on this one don't charge you, which is really nice. Interactive Investor will charge you again zero. IG don't have the functionality again. AJ Bell is £1.50 and Vanguard won't charge you for this service, which is really nice. Free Trade don't have the option and iWeb also don't have the option. Now let's get on to what is one of the most important fees, which is always the hidden fee, which is the FX fee. Now this is a foreign exchange fee. If you buy overseas stocks and shares, you're going to have to pay this fee which is where the cost can creep up. So some of these providers, if you see a plus, it goes on a scaling model, so it actually increases the more that you buy. So Hargreaves Lansdowne is around 1%. Interactive Investor is more expensive at 1.5%. Invest Engine is zero, which is really nice. IG is 0.5%. AJ Bell, 1% plus. Vanguard don't have an FX fee. Free Trade is 0.45%, so that's where Free Trade are making some money, and iWeb is at 1.5% also. Now, the FX fee is quite interesting, but you can get around this by either buying ETFs, which are listed on the UK Stock Exchange, where you're not going to pay an FX fee because the price is already in pounds, because the price is already adjusted and it's in pounds. So rather than going to buy direct stocks and shares on the US stock market, you can buy ETFs which cover them stocks. I hope that makes sense. If you buy those, you won't actually pay that fee. So that might form part of your strategy. So next up, we've got what's actually on the platform because that's pretty important. In terms of shares, HL has 8,000. II has over 40,000. Invest Engine doesn't have individual shares. It's focused on ETFs, which is a really niche, nice little feature of their platform. IG has over 10,000. AJ Bell has over 2,000. Vanguard doesn't have shares. Free Trade has over 5,600 and iWeb has access to the UK and US market. Now I've done my best to find that information. It's not abundantly clear on some of these websites. They just give you a general number. Next up is fractional shares. Now, traditionally this isn't something you would do, but if you wanna buy a fraction of a company rather than buying a Google stock for maybe a thousand pound, you can buy one for 10 pound. And what they do is bundle all those buys together and essentially buy stocks that way. It's quite common of a beginner platform to do that. It's not something traditional brokers would offer. So HL doesn't, II doesn't, Invest Engine doesn't have that available because it's, again, ETFs. IG doesn't do it, AJ Bell doesn't do it. You can see a theme coming here. The only provider that actually does do it is Free Trade. That's because they're aiming at beginner investors. 
Now, in terms of funds on the platform, HL has over 3,000. II doesn't give the specific numbers, but it is included in that 40,000. So I'm pretty sure you're gonna find anything you want on there. If there's something you can't find, you can actually message them and they will see about adding it to their platform. Vest Engine currently have over 400, which to be honest, is probably a lot of the ones you want anyway. And they also will take requests. So if there's one you want, you can request it to them and they'll consider adding it too. I know I've asked for one and it's being added. So I'm really impressed with that service. IG is included in their 10,000. AJ Bell, again, it just says it's combined. Vanguard only have access, although they have access to some of the life strategy funds, they only have access to Vanguard funds. So you can't go and buy one from say, so you can't go and buy one from say iShares, HSBC, or anyone else on the market, only Vanguard. And that's one of the biggest downsides in my book of their platform. Plus, Invest Engine is actually cheaper to buy the Vanguard ETFs because they're not charging you for the ISA. So that's something really important. It's worth bearing in mind. If you're really set on things like the life strategy funds, you can buy some of them within HL and within Interactive Investor. So that's also worth bearing in mind. Free Trade has over 569 funds and iWeb has over 3,000. Now, in terms of the platform, how you can access it, all of these do have a mobile platform except for Vanguard. So if you're looking for an app, pretty much all of them have got one. Desktop, they've all got desktop versions. The only one that doesn't is Free Trade. And that's a bit disappointing for me because I'm always on my computer. I want to be able to check it without having to check my phone. Hopefully that's something they will add in the future. Now, next up is research on the platform. Now, some of these do have quite decent research tools built in. Not that I specifically use one. I will cover the ones that I use in a future video, but let's just talk about what's available. So the research on HL is pretty decent as well. Interactive investor, I would say it's pretty decent. Invest Engine do give you information about the funds, which is nice. IG have okay information. It's not the best. AJ Bell do give you some. Vanguard, it's okay. Again, giving you information about the funds. Free trade level of research is just awful. I'd say they don't really have any. And iWeb does actually have some decent form of information. Now, in terms of user interface and design, how well it is to use the app and how well it's put together is quite important and also how reliable it is. This is my personal opinion, but this is what I would give them. So Hargreaves lands down, I would give a nine out of 10. Interactive Investor is a bit weird. I've kind of warmed to it at first. I thought it was quite basic, but it's basic, but it works. So I'd also give them a nine out of 10. Invest Engine, I'd give a nine out of 10. I'd probably give nobody a 10 out of 10 because I could always pick faults with their design. IG, I would say it's a seven out of 10. It's okay, needs some work. AJ Bell is a six out of 10 because to be honest, it's just lacking a bit and needs bringing up to date. Vanguard, I give an eight out of 10. It is actually a really nice design platform, although it's a bit boring. Free Trade, I would give a seven out of 10. It's good, but I've had some reliability issues and it crashing on me quite a lot, which has been frustrating over the past year. I've been with Free Trade for an entire year now, so I've got quite a clear picture of how it works. And I web, I would say six out of 10. Don't really want to go much lower, but theirs just doesn't look very nice, to be honest. Their logo looks like it's something made in 1995. So definitely need some work. Now, in terms of security, all of these are registered with the FCA, as well as being FCSC compliant. So you are perfect. So you are protected up to 85,000 pound on your cash balance. Your stocks and shares with all of these are held in third parties. So if they went bust, it doesn't matter. Although it would be an inconvenience, for example, if you needed to sell something, but if you're holding for the long term, they're still going to continue to rise. So you're still going to be making money. So in terms of company age, Hargreaves Lansdowne is 41 years old. Interactive Investor is over 27 years. Invest Engine is a newer one at over five years old. IG over 48, AJ Bell 27, Vanguard is over 46 years old, Free Trade is over six years old, and iWeb is over 41 years old. That's just the information I got from Google to give you an idea. Do feel free to double check any of this information. Now, what was also mentioned to me is maybe look at customer service and how good their customer service is. Mm. So I tried to do this, but to be honest, it kind of depends on some platforms. So the first thing I wanted to look at is Trustpilot. Now, Trustpilot being from a web design background, it's a bit skewed, right? So it depends how involved the company is with Trustpilot and to be honest, how much they want to pay. Because Trustpilot for a business does get quite expensive, but some people look at it and some people just like to moan on it as well. You only want to leave a review generally when you've had a bad experience. So let's just run through these quickly. Hargreaves Lansdowne is 4.2 and they've got over 5,300 reviews. Interactive Investor is 4.7 with 19,500, which is the biggest by far. Invest Engine is 4.6 with 186 reviews. Maybe they just haven't used it as much as some other people. Plus, they've not been around five times as long, so it's understandable. 
IG is 3.9, which is a bit disappointing with 5,138 now. The reason I think that might be lower is because a platform is a bit more complicated and especially with their fee structure, if people aren't getting it for free like they thought they were going to be, they're not going to be very impressed. AJ Bell is 4.4, slightly lower at 2,200. Vanguard is 4.2 at 1,496. That's a bit lower again. I don't know whether that's because people were expecting to buy everything through there. And also because it's quite beginner friendly, some people might just be disappointed that they haven't got the returns they expected. Looking at a lot of these platforms, a lot of people did say that they were complaining about their returns, but that's not guaranteed. And you do need to do your own research and realize that capital is at risk with investing. Free trade is 4.2 with 2,621 reviews. So even the difference, for example, between Invest Engine and Free Trade, you can tell that Free Trade are super focused on Trustpilot. So they'll be asking everybody for a review and they respond to every single one ASAP. iWeb is 4.2 with 5,337. So again, take these with a pinch of salt and make what you will. I personally wouldn't go off Trustpilot in the slightest, unless one of these was maybe two out of five, which threw up like major red flags. But in that case, I probably just wouldn't have included them in the first place. The other thing I thought about with customer service is how you can actually contact them. So Hargreaves Lansdowne, I've been super impressed with. They, hands down from my experience, have been the best with customer service. You send them a secure message, they might take a day to respond, but their responses are extremely formal and very well thought out. You can tell you're definitely speaking to someone who has got really good knowledge. And you can also phone them, which is really nice. Interactive Investor, again, a really good system, really good secure messaging service, and you can contact them by phone. Now, Invest Engine was the only one actually on this list to have phone, ticket, and chat. So I could actually just go onto the website and talk to their live chat, which was really nice to see. The fact that I can just hop onto a live chat and talk to someone makes it feel so much more personal. IG has been a little bit more complicated in the past, but that's the same, they have phone and ticket support, albeit a bit more complicated because their platform is, I would say, kind of aimed at more advanced traders. So for beginners, they might find it a little bit more difficult. AJ Bell is phone and ticket. I've not used them, so I can't really testify for them too much. Vanguard is phone and ticket, which again is good. Now free trade, free trade is supposed to have a live chat, but in a year, I've never been able to talk to anybody in live chat. You always have to send them a message and wait two to three days for a response. And the level of response that you receive is kind of like a chatty friend service, which is okay, but maybe with my investments that are worth over £100,000, it's maybe not what I want. So I'd actually put them and iWeb, who also just have a ticket, probably at the lowest on the list. And the last thing quickly to mention is bonus for signing up to the platform. Now, the big providers don't have one because to be honest, they just don't need to do it, right? So it's more incentivized to some of the smaller platforms, which aren't small, but compared to maybe Hargreaves Lansdowne, they are. Free Trade will give you a free share when you sign up, and that generally ends up being about three pound in value. I've had some free shares across the year. Some have been fantastic. I mean, I had one at like 60 to 80 pound, but I'd say the majority over 100 have all been about three pounds. The really good promotion at the moment is with Invest Engine. So depending on when you're watching this, they have a really good promotion, which is going on at the moment. So if you sign up with Invest Engine until the 5th of April, what's really fantastic is it will give you this bonus. Over a thousand pounds, you get 25 pound, 5,000 pound, 50 pound, 10,000, 100, 20,000, 150, over 50,000, you get 200 pound, or if it's over 100,000, you'll get 500 pound in cash. Now, if you're not watching this before the 5th of April or it's after that, you can also get 25 pound when you open your account and still a really nice bonus. And by the way, I'll leave links to all of these providers in the description down below. So don't worry about it. And there'll be the links that will give you these bonuses. So there's all the providers I wanna quickly run through and put who I would put as a winner for each category. So for platform fee, I'd put HL at £3.75 or Invest Engine at zero because that fee is just crazy low. Trading fees, the winners have to be Invest Engine or Free Trade because they both charge zero. The ability to reinvest in stocks has to go to Interactive Investor because they're the only one that offers it at zero. There's a few that let you reinvest in funds. You've got Hargreaves Lansdowne, Interactive Investor, Invest Engine, and of course, Vanguard. So they're not gonna charge you any more for that service. FX fee, the winner has to go to Invest Engine because they're at the lowest by far. Share selection and choice has to go to Interactive Investor because they've got over 40,000, which is such a huge selection. I don't think you're ever gonna need that many, to be honest, but it's a really great number. Fractional shares, I have to give to Free Trade because they're the only option. Funds, there's a few that offer good funds. It's gonna be HL, Interactive Investor, Invest Engine and IG. Free Trade and iWeb also have a nice selection. 
To be honest, there's probably only about 100 funds you could get away with. You don't need a massive selection, so any of these is going to be fine. I haven't listed mobile and desktop because there's only kind of two differences down here with Vanguard not having mobile and free trade not having desktop. All of the others are kind of on equal par. In terms of research, I would give the winners to Hargoose Lansdowne and Interactive Investor. User interface, I'm giving 9 out of 10 to the first three, HL, II and Invest Engine. In terms of the company age, of course, all of the ones that have been around for longer are going to win. Trust Pilot, the winner has to go to Interactive investor but again take that with a pinch of salt because they might just spend way more money on Trustpilot and put way more effort into it. In terms of support, Hargus Lansdowne and IE again is very professional level support. Invest Engine being the only provider having a live chat I have to give it to them and in terms of bonus of course I have to give it to Invest Engine because they're the only one offering that kind of reward. So that's them all side by side let's talk tier list. So I'm going to put these in order of S tier then A, B, C, D right so I'm going to put them in order of who I think is the best going down to the worst. And I'll give you my reasons for each of them why I'm putting them there. So in the D position, I'm going to have to put a lovely friend, iWeb. While it's a really nice platform, they've got a high FX fee as well as the platform just seems a bit dated. And they don't have that option to automatically reinvest, which I really like. Next up, I'm going to put the lovely AJ Bell. Nothing against these platforms. I wouldn't say AJ Bell is particularly bad, but that 0.25% on their funds, which isn't capped, can be extremely expensive. In fact, for me, this would be the most expensive provider across the board. Next up in my B tier, I'm going to put the lovely Vanguard. Now, while I think Vanguard's a fantastic platform for everybody and new beginners, it, to be honest, isn't the cheapest way to buy Vanguard funds anymore. And I'll talk about that more in a second. Now, the one I would put again in this tier is going to be the lovely IG. Now, IG does have a really low FX fee at 0.5% and it's a really advanced platform, but their fee structure for beginners just makes it all a little bit more confusing. Now, in my A tier, I'm actually going to put two providers that you might not expect. That's going to be Hargreaves Lansdowne and it's going to be Interactive Investor. Now, the reason I say this is because a couple of different reasons. Now, both of these providers offer a huge amount of funds available. You can invest in funds, ETFs, stocks, index funds, but they're a bit more expensive than some of the cheaper providers. But you've got to ask yourself, what is your strategy? And do you want to pay a bit more money for better customer support and also more selection of stocks? Hargreaves Lansdowne has got a slightly cheaper monthly fee, but on the flip side, Interactive Investor, gives you that free share every month and as well as giving you the free fees on reinvesting. What you could do with both of these platforms is buy the ETF once and then just keep reinvesting your money at no additional charge. So into my S tier, and this is the reason because I think for 95% of people, this is going to be the cheapest option. If you just want to buy an index fund, simple set and forget kind of approach, you just invest into one fund, keep putting money in, forget about it. The cheapest way currently to do this is going to be Invest Engine. And that's because they have this crazy low fee of zero for an ISA. And they're not charging you to top up every month. They have a really nice feature with rebalancing. You can choose each month to split your money between some different portfolios and an option to automatically rebalance it. Plus, they've got that really nice bonus for signing up. So these are actually the cheapest way that you can invest in Vanguard funds. So yeah, I'd put them on my S tier. Now, the last one is the most difficult part for me because they're the provider that I've used over the past year. And now free trade, I probably would have put in my B tier because to be honest, they do have a good selection if you're paying for the pro account of different features, but they're going to go right down here into my C tier. Now, the reason for this is a bit more controversial, right? So, so free trade have been dragged through the mud recently. And partially the reason you're gonna see this is because YouTubers have been cut off from giving affiliate links. And this happened because a woman claimed you could get out of debt by getting these free shares, which the FCA was not happy with in the slightest. So they've cut them off. And it's crazy because they've literally asked last minute for influencers to edit them out of all videos. And this is with literally like four hours notice, which is crazy. But although that did happen, that hasn't really bothered me. What does bother me though is this. A couple of things. One, my first reaction was when they did this was the fact they've got some really big influencers involved in giving free shares. So they sponsored the True Geordie podcast as well as Colin who built a tunnel under his house. And these guys have got massive, massive following. So my immediate thought was maybe they've just had a huge influx of new users and they just can't cope with the pressure. So that was the first kind of suspicion I had. The second thing, of course, is this new thing where they've literally just terrified the nation in saying that they're going to lend out your shares. Now this doesn't apply to an ISA account, which is fine for the purpose of this video, 
but it bothers me because of this. One was the wording that they used in their email, where they said they will take reasonable measures to return your stocks if something bad happens. Now I know that they've probably been told by the FCA to put that, but reasonable measures doesn't fill me with confidence. The reason this is quite bad is not even because of that, because actually lending out shares is what the majority of stocks and shares platforms will do. People allow you to short stocks, it's quite common in trading, but they did make a huge point that when they launch, that they don't want to go down that line, they're very much beginner friendly, and not getting into any kind of risk in trading strategies. So it makes you pause and think, if they didn't want to do that, then why are they now doing it? Are they desperate for money? have they really wanted to add this feature unless they needed the money? Now it might not be the case, and of course this could be complete speculation, so don't take my word for it. Kind of left me on a bit of a sour note. Along with them at the moment, I'm probably gonna move away from them. And to be honest, I wasn't really sure if to include them in this video. But I put them in because I think it's good to have a complete picture. And again, I just wanna be as transparent as possible. So there we have it. There's my comparison and my tier list and kind of my reasons why. Now, what am I actually doing? So at the moment, I'm a bit torn. I'm not quite sure which way I'm going to go. For me, the choices are either gonna be Invest Engine or Interactive Investor, or possibly even Hargreaves Lansdowne. I'm kind of torn because on HL, I've got my Lifetime ISA, so it's quite nice to have your Lifetime ISA and your Stocks and Shares ISA in one place. But for me, because I'm considering opening a SIP for my pension, I've got to kind of weigh out the cons of that one as well. So I'm going to do a comparison on SIPs and then I can kind of make a clearer picture of what I'm going to do. So do subscribe and stick around because you'll see my entire investment strategy going forward. I hope this has been useful. Please do press that like button because this takes, again, so much work. And let me know anything down below that you want me to cover because my plan is to cover a lot of beginner-friendly content. And if you're new to investing, well done because you've just made the first best step that you can make. And I'll see you guys in the next video.